This baptismal font that sits in the sanctuary of this congregation and baptismal fonts around the world, though they may differ in size or shape or color, are visible reminders of invisible truth, that we are God's children and that God claims us. When a parent or grandparent or guardian presents a child for baptism, they are acknowledging the fact that they are mere stewards of that child for a brief period of time, that the child ultimately belongs to God. I remember reading the haunting words of Cahill Gibran years ago. In his book, The Prophet, your children are not your children. They are the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself. They come through you, but not from you. And though they are with you, they belong not to you. You give them your love, but not your thoughts, for they have their own thoughts. You may house their bodies, but not their souls, for their souls dwell in the house of tomorrow, which you cannot visit, not even in your dreams. You are the bows from which your children, as living arrows, are set forth. The great archer sees the mark upon the path of the infinite, and he bends you with his might that his arrows may go swift and far. Let your bending in the archer's hand be for gladness, for even as he loves the arrow that flies, he loves also the bow that is stable. If we live, the Apostle Paul wrote, we live unto the Lord, and if we die, we die unto the Lord, so that in both life and death, we belong to the Lord. I believe that the life that we live, the decisions that we make, the things that we do, the great and the small, the well-known as well as the forgotten, are letters in the thank you note of life that we are writing to God for the grace that God has given to us. The baptismal font is that visible reminder not only of God's claim upon our life, but God's call to us. And this call is a call not to be conformed to the ways of a broken world, but rather to be transformed into the image of God reflected in the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is the epistle of 1 John that tells us that God is love and that perfect love casts out fear. Fear not and be not afraid occurs over 80 times in the Bible. Our baptism calls us to remember that and to be bold in our work, to be bold in our love and to never let fear win life's battles. There is a reason why in his letter to the Corinthians, the Apostle Paul spoke about a bold, world-changing love in these terms. Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than self. It doesn't want what it doesn't have. It doesn't strut. It doesn't have a swelled head. It doesn't force itself on others. Love isn't me first. It doesn't fly off the handle, nor does it keep score of the sins of others. It doesn't revel when others grovel. Love takes pleasure in the fl flowing of truth. It puts up with anything. It trusts God always. It always looks for the best. It keeps on going to the end. Love never dies. On this baptism of the Lord's Sunday, our baptism reminds us that there is an eternal love that has enveloped us before we even knew that love existed. This enveloping love calls us to live into our baptism vows, to live into them to the glory of God. Let those with ears to hear listen. I am Frosty Crummel, the senior minister of First Federated Church in Peoria. Wishing you a blessed day.